Greg Hoy with a lot of imagery in that report. The Australian War Memorial in Canberra is one of the country's most popular tourist destinations, featuring displays of Australian forces engaged overseas on combat or peacekeeping operations going back at least to the Boer War. But late last year, the history professor Ken Inglis renewed a call for the War Memorial to recognise one conflict not commemorated, the fighting between Aboriginal people and the country's early colonial settlers. The official memorial response is that such fighting falls outside its charter, a claim that's disputed by some respected military historians and Aboriginal people. Matt Peacock reports. Australians come here in their thousands, some to pay tribute, others to learn. It's a very special place for Australians because it, it tells of grief and it tells of sadness, it tells of achievement, it tells of bravery and, and uh, sacrifice. The popular war memorial in Canberra commemorates Australian military engagements spanning more than a century. The Boer War, the World Wars, Vietnam, just to name some. But one armed conflict is missing fighting between the country's original inhabitants and its British settlers. The Australian War Memorial is a magnificent institution and it tells, you know, the great history of the, of the, the Australians in conflict, but it has this gap and that, is, that gap is the frontier. The Australian War Memorial commemorates the sacrifice of Australians on behalf of Australia. Uh, it's not to be engaged in what were skirmishes at the time of early colonial development. We are absolutely talking war here, and the, the, the end of the denial by the War Memorial would seek some peace by Aboriginal people. Most historians agree that many confrontations were warlike in nature, like the fighting just outside Sydney, when in the early days of the colony, Governor Macquarie sent troops to secure a disputed section of the Hawkesbury River. The people there thought it was a war. You have uh, military officers who'd served in other parts of the British Empire saying that this was a war, that war had broken out on the frontier. You had the British Army being sent out to the Hawkesbury. You had uh, garrisons of, of British soldiers being kept there. This is a map of all the principal conflicts that occurred with the Aborigines. In his definitive of Atlas of Australia's Wars, the former there, Chief of Army and military South historian South Lieutenant General South John South Coates South describes the frontier conflicts as a brutal, bloody and sustained confrontation that took place on every significant piece of land across the continent. Really, you've got two, two groups of Australians who, who in, in a sense, were involved in a low-scale civil war. I mean, we'd arrived in their country and tried to brush them aside, and they didn't want to be brushed. That, from a, from a, uh, a, a trained historian who's also a lieutenant general, seems to me to put it almost beyond doubt and to make the, what I think is the case for that warfare being uh, recognised uh, by the Australian War Memorial. History professor Ken Inglis called for that at the launch of his book, Sacred Places, ten years ago, a proposition the former Prime Minister, John Howard, quickly quashed. If you want to be legalistic about it, a state of war didn't exist. Now, uh, I think the Australian War Memorial is to honour Aboriginal Australians and other Australians who died defending Australia. I think warfare is a legitimate term to use, not about the whole relationship, but about certain periods. Professor Geoffrey Blaney, as far back as 1979, was asked for ideas by a war memorial, then open to the suggestion that the frontier conflicts might be included. I thought it possibly at their suggestion, although I was quite happy with the idea that there should be a section on irregular warfare with the Eureka Stockade, uh, conflict between Aborigines and Europeans, uh, the, the Vietnam War, which wasn't in the Australian War Memorial at that time, Historian Dr Michael McKernan, then the Deputy Director of the Memorial, recalls that a change to its Act the following year made such recognition possible. The Act was changed in 1980 to give coverage to all wars and warlike operations in which Australians have been involved. Really, I think, to give legitimacy to the Boer War, which was, of course, colonial troops in the first instance. The amended Act read that Australia's military history 
was the history of wars and warlike operations in which Australians have been on active service and the Defence Force, which included any military force of the Crown raised in Australia. That change in act gave the opportunity for a much wider coverage and that's when it began to be discussed about frontier conflict and the, and the war memorial. It be our view that it is not appropriate to commemorate uh, nationally and certainly not in the Australian War Memorial, despite the fact you might call it a war. For the Memorial Council member and President of the Return Services League, Major General Bill Cruz, frontier conflict just isn't on the agenda. It hasn't been discussed in my time on the Council the last three years, but it was discussed almost ten years ago and the Council decided it was inappropriate. In 1999, the current director of the War Memorial, Major General Steve Gower, asked its military history section to investigate the idea. Although the director has refused to appear on this program, in a recent edition of the Memorial's Wartime magazine, he says the advice he received was, only police forces or British military units were involved in the wars, whereas the Memorial's charter calls upon it to commemorate Australia's military forces. The director concluded, there the matter rests. But does it? You can see some of the technology on each side, the, the firearms on the European club, in this case from Queensland. Dr Peter Stanley, now with the National Museum of Australia, was the War Memorial's principal historian for nearly three decades. But the report also demonstrates that the, there were other than British troops involved in this conflict with Aborigines on the, the frontier of settlement. It was a war fought by stockmen and settlers and by convict overseers, but also by military mounted police who were recruited in Australia. Does so, the director have a, uh, have a point though? I mean, these were not Australian troops raised in Australia? I think he has a legal point, that is, is that the, the troops were mainly not made, composed of Australians recruited in Australia, but the people they were fighting were Australians, they were Australian Aborigines. So this clearly is a war that belongs to Australia's history and we ought to recognise as such. In fact, the advice the director received in 1999, which we have a copy of here, left the question open. He concluded there was little doubt that the frontier conflicts were a war or warlike operations. And although the British Army units used against Aborigines were not raised in Australia, the quasi-military police forces involved were. He concluded that if the War Memorial wanted to interpret its act in that way, it was legally free to do so. Well, you've also got to look at the charter of the memorial and the basis on which it was established. And none of those lend themselves to the inclusion of these engagements back in the early colonial days. It's really as simple as that. Charles Bean's original concept for the memorial says the director in a statement was unquestionably concerned with external conflicts. But the memorial's refusal to commemorate early Aboriginal heroes, according to Professor Gordon Briscoe, is cultural racism. We want this uh, recognised, redefined as a war of resistance against the British, which was continued into the Australian period. Within the War Memorial's walls, an Aboriginal warrior appears as a stone carving alongside wombats and other native fauna. Examples of more recent Aboriginal service overseas are integrated into its general displays. Interpretations of history, like the times, do change. As Prime Minister of Australia, I am sorry. One year on from the Prime Minister's historic apology to the Aboriginal stolen generations, say some historians, it might also be time to recognise an undeniable reality. We quite rightly recognise the, the great and good things that Australians have done in war, but we also ought to have the maturity to face up to the fact that Australians in the 19th century, some Australians were involved in a nasty, protracted guerrilla war against the original inhabitants of this continent. I dream about the day that we could look at some young child walking into the, the war memorial and seeing a representation that brings back the long fight of uh, their people for their land.